Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn with another behind the scenes video, this time on building a new PC. So I've actually been tasked with building a PC and I was asked by XPG, which is part of Alita, to do a video on this case, which is the Defender Pro. It's a mid-tower case. And so, obviously, if you're going to do a video on a case, the best thing to do is to build a PC in it. So, I have a number of other parts from them, which includes some Spectrix DG60 RAM, so, uh, a Spectrix S40G NVMe RGB drive, so it's got RGB on it, why not? And we have a Levante 240mm cooler from XPG as well. Be Quiet, Straight Power 11, 750 watt Platinum Supply Unit. I haven't used anything other than core set power supply units for a long time, but I'm interested in seeing Be Quiet because they're known for being very good and quiet. So I'm actually hoping to do more with them in future. Interesting to see. And then we have a Zeus Pro Art B550 Creator motherboard. And a Ryzen 9 processor. This is a 5900X. Now, if it looks like I don't know what's going on, that's because this was actually. The story behind this is the parts, some of the parts, were purchased by a friend that I game with, who goes by the name of Moist Kebab. When we play online, you might have heard him if you watched any of my gameplay video clips. And so I'm combining two things I'm building him a PC with various parts that he's purchased, as well as the parts that have been supplied for the video. Uh, well, I say video, it's actually going to end up being multiple videos. This is going to be quite an undertaking for me because I've got to do a video on the case, the power supply unit, the RAM, the NVMe drives, the cooler, and uh, yeah, that's it, I think. Maybe that's it. Obviously each of those, that's five videos. Now, the last time I did a build video, was the Corsair 5000D Airflow, which took maybe two days to put together. I don't mean solid days, but a lot of hours, probably about eight hours, I'd say, to build, which sounds like a long time to build a PC, but that is mostly because I'm also capturing footage while doing it, and I'm going to show you that now, because people probably don't realise the effort that goes into a build video. <laughs> It's not just a case of setting one camera up and then doing it. You obviously got to move things into multiple angles. I'm going to make big use of my overhead camera for this, but also side-on shots. Um, I have a sort of plan in mind tonight. I'm going to start by unboxing the power supply unit, get some shots of that and the detail of it and what's in the box. I'm then going to move on to the motherboard and the CPU and other bits. Install those initially and get some close-up shots of that, unboxing each of the bits of RAM. I've got some ideas on like nice ways to do that, try and get some really close shots of that as it's coming out. Satisfying, and I'm do some satisfying cuts, maybe with some peel, I don't know how much stuff there is to peel in there, so it'd be interesting to see that. Set it up, maybe put the CPU in the motherboard, and then see what time it is by the time I've finished all that and then unbox the case either tonight or tomorrow, depending on how that goes, and start the installation process there. I've not worked with the XPG stuff before, so it's interesting to see sort of what's in the box and the setup process for the case. Hopefully it's straightforward. And obviously I've got to work out the cooler. There's loads of things to get out of the box and get video clips of and other things. But obviously all that sort of takes time, all this is going to take time to do, it take anybody time to do, but you usually when you're building a PC aren't also trying to record every angle of it and get good quality footage of it that you can then craft into a video. And like I said, the last one took me eight hours and there was probably eight hours of footage in that. I edited that down to two hours long, which was just far too long obviously. It took me about four different edits to get it down into a 50 minute video, which I thought was far too long, but has now had over 100,000 views. So people obviously appreciate the in-depth sort of look at that case. I'm probably gonna end up doing the same for this XPG case. I don't expect it'll do as well, and uh, we'll see. That's not because 
I think XPG isn't as good as Corsair necessarily, I just don't know what the search volumes are like on it. However, I might have an advantage because there might not be many other videos out there on this case. Uh, because it's a lesser known brand or at least not as big as Corsair and therefore probably not as purchased and not as searched and probably not as created in terms of content by other people. So I'm hoping that it might do well. Uh, it's one of those things that's just going to be a case of try and see. But because I'm going to hit multiple different videos with it, obviously I'm going to do a video on the case, a video on the power supply unit, a video on the cooler, a video on the RAM, a video on the a NVMe drive, the setup of that, benchmarks of it, showing it off, unboxing, because unboxing an NVMe drive is fairly straightforward, right? You just take it out of the box, there it is, and the process of installation. So usually I find with NVMe drives, the process of taking it out, installing it, and then setting it up in Windows, showing that process and the intricate steps in it is actually much more useful to people, and those videos tend to get more views but also doing a video unboxing and then just showing benchmarks and talking about software and things like that also does well. So there's potentially two videos just in one NVMe drive. And so the idea here is like I'm thinking about multiple different thing, bits of content that I can create, but also knowing that all of this is going to take a long time. I've also are been asked by another company who shall remain nameless because their product's under embargo to build another PC by the end of this month and that doesn't give me much time because it's currently the 15th so I have 15 days of which there aren't really 15 days because I only actually do video three days a week um, so I don't have much time I've got to build two PCs in a very short period of time and so I should probably stop waffling and get on with it now I'm going to talk about the setup of this area so this is where I'm going to do the PC build on the desk as normal, except I'm going to use my cutting mat. Which I've shown before, because obviously there's potential for scratching on a very expensive wooden desk surface with various bits of metal and other things, and that would be a disaster. And so I'm going to move things out of the way and pop this on. Another point that might be interesting is down here, down there, you'll see there's a mat. This isn't actually any normal mat, this is a very special mat that is actually plugged into the wall via this cable and that what that does is it earths it. That is an anti-static mat which helps disperse static electricity. Now historically I'd have used a wrist strap that plugs into a wall or attaches to a radiator or an exposed metal pipe that then gets the static out of your body and stops you frying important electronics that are going to cost money. However having a strap on your arm while trying to do things including recording video is a pain. So what I do, I mean there are two options with this mat, you either put it on the desk and you have your hands on it, or what I tend to do is I take my socks off and I stand barefoot on it, so my feet are always on the antistatic mat, so there's always the flow through and the pass through and the earthing of my body. And that also means that no straps are in the video, so it's cleaner and it looks nicer. Some might say there's no point in antistatic mats nowadays or straps, however I disagree with that. Um, Linus Tech Tips did an interesting video on static, which I'll try and link to if I remember, that's worth watching, uh, it's interesting. But basically any static electricity you build up in your body could accidentally fry parts, and these parts don't belong to me, so I don't want to destroy them, I don't want to have to buy a new CPU for my friend because I accidentally fried it, I don't know how much this cost, I imagine it wasn't cheap. <laughs> Other points of interest is this is the first time I've done an AMD build for a very long time, probably like 10 years or something. Like it's been an incredible long time. I've been using Intel for a long old time now. And so this is gonna be different. It shouldn't be too complicated because it's, you know, CPU is usually the same installation. The only difference will probably be with the AIO setup. Interesting. So next part is going to be power supply unit. I wanna start with that. It might seem like the most boring thing to start with. Well, I want to check what you get in the box, I want to see if you've got power cables, I assume you have. Get some close-up shots of it. So I'm going to treat it like an unboxing, I'm going to do an unboxing of the power supply unit. Set that aside, and then I'm going to unbox 
the motherboard, and then the RAM and the NVMe drives and bits like that, and just go through that process, initial process. The hope being that I can then get to a point where everything's installed on the motherboard and it's ready to slot into the case, and then I just get the case out and unbox that. One of the biggest problems with doing this sort of video is negotiating your way around the camera. So I've got the camera, this camera here, for example, while also keeping your feet on the mat. It becomes a bigger problem when you're dealing with the case and you've got to move around it a bit more. But it is a nice big mat. I can basically stand on it shoulder width apart and have my feet on most of it at all times. So that's obviously beneficial. As I said, unboxing this to start with, get it into a nice position, get it out of the box. Then get the usual sort of close up shots of it and hopefully show it off from various angles that will be satisfying. One of the interesting challenges from this is this reflective surface picks up the light but also the camera. So, in the viewfinder on here, you can actually see the mic and the boom arm on top of the thing, which is obviously not ideal. Doesn't look great. So the question becomes, do I leave that in, or do I cut it out? Because I know people like the peel, and this is definitely the best angle. I don't think I'd be able to get rid of that reflection. And so, what do I do with it? Do I leave that reflection in, and are people bothered by that? Or is that more satisfying? Or do I remove it so there's no peel in the video? People like peels, so it's a sort of conundrum that you come across. This is annoying. <laughs> that noise happens a lot. My cousin has just walked past the house and set off my ring doorbell alarm, which has then gone off on my phone in the middle of capturing a video, and that's the second time that's happened today. This is first world problems, I tell you. I try and make ASMR videos that are perfectly quiet, and then you have stupid stuff like that. I should really snooze my phone, or maybe even turn it off. In fact, I'm going to turn it off, because that has happened repeatedly today, and it is very annoying. Another challenge of making stuff and living in the UK is this sort of thing. European and American plugs being provided with products. A number of adapters that I have to buy. Luckily I have a power cable because I've got loads of kettle power cables around for power supply units and stuff. But, oh my god, <laughs> so annoying. British plugs please, thank you. Something to be aware of though, it's something that I can include in the video. I have however got a pretty nice shot from here, which I'll show you in a B-roll clip. But it's basically all the products lined up on the mat and from above, and it should look really good for a photo. So what I'm trying to demonstrate with the shots that I'm getting at the moment is how plugging the cables in. Because I actually had questions on previous PSC videos that I've done about how you plug cables in and where, which I was really surprised by. Because it's something that seems really obvious, especially when they're labelled like this one is, for example, with the ATX main connector. So that's main power supply for the motherboard. That's the 24 pin. And then you have another one that says VGA on it, which is the graphics card. So they're all kind of labelled quite simply things like HDD DVD SATA. You'd use these obviously for your SSD drives and such, but things that I think are obvious aren't necessarily obvious. Where it basically says motherboard, motherboard, P8, P4, drive, 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 PCI2, PCI1, and so obviously SATA drives plug in here, hard disk drives. Your main motherboard power supply there, P8, 
P8 and P4, I assume, is secondary power supplies for your motherboard. And then PCIe 1 will be graphics card. And 2 is it? So it's not got a lot of outputs on it. Like, not like the Corsair 850X, which I've done previously, or M850X, there's a lot more connection options on it. So I need to check that this will suit the motherboard okay. Should do, should be fine. And we haven't got a great deal of drives to install. I'm not doing SATA or hard disk drives on this. It's actually just going to be NVMe, so it's that bit of it should be fairly straightforward. Now I've got top down shot with the main camera. I had a little bit of plugging it in, but I'm going to get some close up shots of it as well. I'm going to do some close up panning shots of it with my main tripod camera, but also focus on these bits and sort of show where you plug the cables in, and then I can show where they go on the other end. I think it's really difficult to sort of show how this will be set up. Obviously I don't have SATA to connect to this PC that I'm setting up, so it would be really difficult to show that. I don't even have a spare NVMe drive floating around or anything that I could connect up. I don't even have a spare 2.5 inch drive that I can connect up to it. So I took something out of my PC, which I really don't want to do. Um, so maybe I'll just talk about it and demonstrate how you plug the cables in. I don't want to go into too much on that. Obviously just showing off other things, talking about how quiet it is, how much voltage you can get out of it, things like that. And then I've got a mess of cables to deal with. You can see, just messy. And now I'm trying to make what is essentially a very boring product. <laughs> Not that be quite it's a power supply and it's not good, just that it's a power supply and how do you make that interesting? I'm trying to make it look interesting by spinning it around and capturing footage of it from this angle. And actually the results of it aren't too bad because what's happening is the green from one of the lights over there is reflecting on the side and one of the other lights is picking up the be quiet writing on the other side so it actually looks really good. So it should be a nice sort of intro clip into the video. Here's the Be Quiet power supply unit. Now I'm thinking that actually as well, a good shot will be from the top of the thing spinning around. If I can get this into a good position, I can hopefully get it so you can't see the cable coming out of the Lazy Susan. Which might require a little bit more repositioning. As with power supply unit, yeah, it's pretty difficult to make RAM look interesting. Um, this isn't especially interesting looking before it's plugged in, although the RGB on it is probably going to make it stand out when it does go in. One downside is warranty void if removed stickers on one side, which will hopefully be hidden I suppose when it's all plugged in, but pretty nasty looking sticker to put right on the side of the RAM like that. I don't know where else they put it, but not really a fan of that. Interesting looking though, kind of a sun-like logo and well yeah. And now I'm at the stage of unboxing this bad boy, fitting all the RAM and the NVMe drive, probably the CPU. And then just repositioning things putting it back in the box, tucking it out of the way and getting a start on the case. I'm making pretty good progress. What I'll try and do is get, maybe I'll keep this one top down angle and move the other camera over to this side with the hope that the RAM will sit in and you'll see everything. I might try and slide it in and get any peel off from one side and try and make it look nice. I don't know what the motherboard looks like at this stage. spoil the experience. Just unboxed it for unboxing it. There's no label to keep it in place. Oh, shock.
now I've got the motherboard out of the box. One of the things I'm going to do, which I usually try and do, but I don't include in the video, is to fold the anti-static bag so that it sits behind the motherboard, so the motherboard's not touching anything. And therefore, this anti-static bag will still protect the motherboard while I'm working on it, and also mean I'm not pressing it up against the desk or the mat. So just try and neatly fold it so it's not visible behind the shot. You'll see how I've got some spare on the right. So just need to fold that over, tuck it underneath, and then hopefully it's mostly out of the shot but still protects the motherboard while I install the various bits. See little bits of it still. So I'm just going to put that in. Basically, trying to create the illusion of a very neat thing. Maybe this is the wrong thing to do though, because otherwise people might get the idea that it's a good idea to just ram it on the desk and build it. You could build it in the box. Obviously, you don't want to damage anything on the back, any of the pins or anything, but. with the folding, it doesn't need to cover the entire thing. Pretty sure there won't be any static off this mat. Anything that does generate should disappear through me anyway. There we go. There's a point of interest here which I'm going to get, which is going to be interesting, in that this drive slot has a clip in it, which normally you put an M2 screw in here to hold it in place, but it actually has a clip, which I think is part of the new ASUS design for motherboards. It's really cool. Basically, you don't need a screw anymore, which is fantastic. Makes the installation process a hell of a lot easier. Normally my installation videos are take that off, pop your drive in and put a screw here, but you don't need to. Both of these slots have a attachment that just swivels around. So I'm gonna get that on video now. Here's an interesting insight into the challenges of trying to get multi-angle. I've decided to take one of my cameras off its main tripod and put it on this little one so I can get it super close. With the result of having a really good shot of where the CPU is going to go into. But that means that the top-down camera, when I put it into the usual position, now has a big microphone in the way of it. Now I could take that microphone off. But I think what I'm going to try and do is change the lens and get this camera into a different angle. So I take the wide angle lens off so hopefully I can focus in from two different angles on where the CPU is going to be installed. Now this isn't actually a central part of the build because actually the build that I'm intending to do is more about the case and the NVMe and the SSD, mini NVMe and the RAM. It's not about the motherboard, I'm not going to bother doing a video on the motherboard, I haven't got time. It's not really a gamery one, it's more of a creator one. I mean, it, the shots of it are going to get included, but I'm not going to do a video on it. for a bit of peel. It 
So now I've got the motherboard into a state of preparation. CPU's installed, RAM, NVMe drive, everything's ready to go basically. And I'm only just going to put it back in its bag temporarily and put it back in its box out of the way so I can unbox the case. This is actually going a lot smoother than I thought it would. It's taken me about two hours so far. It's 10 p.m. So I've got an hour to unbox the case and do an analysis of that. I might have time to install maybe the power supply unit. I need to suss out the case and look at all the intricacies of that because it could get a bit more complicated then. I think the most complicated bit is probably going to be the CPU cooler because I've not done an AMD CPU cooler for a long, long time. So I don't know what the complexities of installing that is. We'll find out in a minute. But I'm going to rebag this. It won't fit perfectly back in its bag. Obviously, but now it's got RAM jetting out of it. But hopefully, it'll work enough that I can keep it safe while I work on the rest of it. I might shoot it back in there. Is it just big enough to cover over the ports? So, oh, a bit tricky. So with a little bit of convincing, I have managed to get it back in here. This is obviously preferable because it keeps the CPU dust-free and such, and protected while I go about the next part, which is going to be setting up the case. One of the biggest challenges of doing something like a case is that it's so massive, obviously. If you're doing an unboxing of a case you need to put the cameras as far back as possible. The behind the scenes camera like the other side of the room just to show you how far back I need to go. Obviously that doesn't need to be that wide because you don't need to see all this but I've had to put the boom arm camera like up jumping out into the middle of the room. My other camera is right across this side with hopefully a really good view. I'm going to have two angles as I unbox it and you've got to also not get in the way. So I'm going to try and tackle that gun box in a usual sort of way by spinning the case around and showing you off that. Then I have found that the best way of unboxing these is to cut the underneath rather than the top. And you simply lift the box up and the case falls out, or at least slides out, hopefully. Otherwise you've got to cut it out and you've got to try and tease it out of the box and it becomes a nightmare. So actually that is a pro tip from experience that if you're taking a case out of the box, cut the underside, remove the flaps out, and it becomes a lot easier. So now we're going to start. We've got a pretty nice angle from both sides. This is the first time I've jutted out the boom arm this far, so it's pretty cool that we can do this. actually been some fairly interesting highlights to this already. One of the things I like about doing these videos or having these experiences with unboxing things is the journey of discovery. So though I knew a rough bit about this case before I got it, there's nothing like the experience of actually getting it out of the box and sort of weighing up and weighing up what's inside and what the setup's like and all the other sort of aspects of it. So for example there's a few different things I've already picked up on when getting this out of the box which are interesting and may present a problem or are curious. For one it's quite lightweight, very light, except there's this front panel here which has quite large mesh on it 
and it also it's like metal on the front and then plastic mesh on the inside. It's held on with magnets, so it snaps on really easily to the front. Put it the right way up, uh, like so. But actually, this thing like weighs. It feels like it weighs a good portion of what the overall weight of the case is, so it's actually quite heavy, which is a point of interest. The other point of curiosity is there's a dust cover inside, so you essentially have two dust covers because that front outer one has this mesh shielding on it, so that will stop some dust ingress. And then you've also got extra dust shielding here, but I initially tried to get it off by just pulling it off, assuming it would be held on with magnets, but actually when you look on the inside it's held on with clips, so you've got to pull this bit forward and then lift the thing up. I've just thrown it across the room. And then you have access to the fans. The fans are another point of interest because they have cables, obviously. But they have two cables. And they are RGB fans, so power, fair enough. And also RGB, but there's actually four connectors rather than just two, which is what you'd normally experience on something like the NZXT's RGB fans or Corsairs. And so I'm now questioning how the hell that works, although it looks like one of them's female and the other one's male. You see that? Maybe you can see that there. If not, you'll see it in the proper video. I've now got to get footage of all of these and obviously the installation process for doing it. I'm wondering whether they daisy chain together, like the power connector goes from one fan to the next. If they do, then this will be a lot easier. I'm also going to move this fan from the rear and put it on the front because there's a gap here where there's one missing and I think personally the three RGB fans on the front looks nicer also means intake of air you could argue that perhaps that bottom fan isn't necessary because the air going in there just will hit the bottom if you had hard drives in there be in that drive tray so that cool them down you could take that out we could take that out so we've got air for the PSU I need to look at that. I need to get clips of that. I need to get clips of me removing that and installing it on the front. I need to show off the standoffs. There's multiple standoffs are pre-installed. Hopefully they're all in the right position. I want to show the cabling for the front panel connections. There's quite a lot of cables here. Inside here is a box full of other stuff. So it looks like a fairly good setup on this case, I'll be honest, so far from what I've seen. Pretty standard, looks reasonably solidly built, nice sort of design to it. You've got plenty of fan areas. These dust covers are going to be really good for keeping the dirt out and you can take it off and clean it. I really like that. There's also one on the underside, which is easy to access. There's a daddy long legs buzzing on my light. And... Um, some interesting cable management sections. So yeah, I think the biggest challenge is going to be these fans, but I have a feeling they're daisy chain. I need to read the manual. I think that's actually going to be really interesting. But if all on the front, no, I should be able to connect them up really easily. And then the question becomes, where do you plug them in? Obviously, one of these is power. I haven't seen a control box, but maybe there's one inside the box. Or maybe they connect to the... Uh, there's a connection here that looks like similar, so maybe they connect to the front. I need to read the manual, clearly. This is why you have to read the manuals, but all points of interest that are going to be fun, challenging to look at. Also, another thing that I had with Corsair's case when I reviewed that was there wasn't enough space for power supply unit when the front thing was in. Uh, it looks like there might be more space here than there was. It's going to depend on the PSU, so that might be a potential area that I'll hit a problem with at some point. So I'm going to get pan shots of all of this, and all the bits that I've just talked about, and then I can obviously cover all that off, and then I'm going to hopefully... And it's actually 20 to 11 now, so I haven't got much time left, but I'm going to maybe install the PSU. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I can start again tomorrow night. I'm old and I don't want to stay up past 11 on a weekday. So I've had a look and I think my biggest challenge with this case is actually going to be the fans because 
There's a multitude of RGB cables coming out of here, and there's no instructions on how to plug them in. The instruction manual doesn't seem to have any instructions on it. And I'm not sure whether it's a daisy chain system that you can just plug in. So what I've established, what I've worked out from this, is that there's, it looks like, there's an RGB strip here and here, and then you have RGB on the fans as well. But these, there's power cables running from this front panel, which includes, means cables running from this front panel, which includes a mess of RGB cables. You've got two, and then you've got some that are plugged into each other, and I don't know if these are daisy chaining, I mean it looks like they are, but there's a spare one and it's just a nightmare. The rest of the thing should be fairly straightforward. There's another RGB cable there, so it's just ridiculous amounts. We've got USB, front panel audio, uh, power supply switches, and a SATA power cable, so they're not tricky, those ones, but it's like, I mean there's one, two, three, four RGB ends. I mean, and there's only two uh, RGB strips from what I can see, so I don't understand where the hell they're going unless they connect to the fans. Which they might do. Even one of them's got to go onto the motherboard as so well. There's no controller of any mention in here, so this is going to be fun to work out. As in, that should be a nightmare. So here we are with the 240mm cooler and all the bits out of the box. Um, I'll need different brackets because we're obviously installing AM4, so I need to install this one on the pump head and the AM4 things on the motherboard and standoffs. Actually the instruction manual is really good on what to do and I've learned something which is going to be useful. These fans are indeed daisy chains, so that's fantastic. So the, there's cables that come out of them with the RGB headers and the power headers and then they basically just connect together. So I think once I fathom out how to do it in the case I can connect all five fans together, three that are already included in the case and these two extra ones and that should work. I don't know how the front panel connectors work. I think that's actually going to be the most difficult thing in this build is getting the fans working because there's so many different cables. But so now I'm going to set up in this position and go about installing the fans and the bracket on the cooler and work out the orientation of that. I'm thinking it makes sense to have the pump head on the left hand side so there are no fans at the back of the case and it would probably be the neatest but I need to work that out because you see top mounting it and then doing that is a bit awkward so maybe this way around is better I don't know if you can turn the head so I need to work it out as I'm doing it So here's a curious dilemma with this part of the build process. I am obviously about to install the AIO. It's 240mm, but the sort of positions that you can install it on are either like this, right in the middle, or you flip it round and have the cables the other way. Still right in the middle, basically, but I don't know, it's sort of too far to the right now, so I can't decide whether it's better to have it too far to the right or sort of more central. I think the, the 
pump tubes would be more out of the way on this side and possibly less obnoxious, but then they might get in the way of that back plate, which is quite a nice looking sort of section of the thingy. However, if they're this way they won't block the RGB RAM, so that's probably the way I'm going to go. It's weird because it looks like it should take a 360mm radio, but it's only meant for a 240 or a 280. Very strange design in that way. And now I'm going to try and capture that problem with two different cameras from two different angles. It'll get the installation from above because obviously the screws are going to go in there, but also demonstrating where it's going to sit from below because people might question why I've not put it further back because in an ideal world you'd put it further back here but the rungs for the screw mounts are in the wrong place. Here we are with the mostly finished thing. Um, it's actually not looking too bad. Obviously it's not got a GPU in it yet and there's still a way to go because I've got to install Windows, but it's looking kind of nice. Uh, everything's working, or at least it's turned on. It's as far as I know. <laughs> Beyond that, I don't know whether it's actually posting anything yet. Um, but it hasn't turned itself off or anything repeatedly like that, which is usually a good sign. The biggest challenge was it was the fans, although it actually has worked first time by the looks of it. I don't know about the sequence of it, but basically I connected up these two fans, both in terms of power and RGB and the pump head, and the instructions are not clear, but I decided that I was going to plug the CPU, these fans into the CPU header and the pump into the pump header, which I'm not sure is the best course of action, but it's working currently now, and then these fans are daisy chained together and then connected. There's also some front RGB at the front here and at the bottom, which I'll need to capture. That was complicated. And there's also some cables left over, but I have no clue what you meant to do with them. I'm wondering whether they're spare for extra like LED um, strips or something, but there's no instructions in the case that help with that. <laughs> it's stupid and annoying, really. But yeah, it's going. So, it's a bonus. It's taken nearly another three hours, and I'm not quite finished. I need some sort of final shots of this. The back needs tidying up. Well, that's a mess back there. moment the cables are all just <laughs> chaos because I haven't 
I didn't want to tidy them because I wasn't sure that these power cables were right, but it looks like they're okay. So now I suppose I'm going to go about the process of tidying up a bit. Not too extreme because I'm probably going to take this apart again in a week, but I'll try and make it a bit neat, neater. And then maybe put the GPU in and get some pictures of that and some video. And here I am at the end of the build process and things actually went a lot smoother than I thought they were going to, to be honest. The end result came out really nice and also the case looks really good. But there are a couple of points to talk about. You'll notice, for example, that the graphics card is set really low in the case. I actually had to use the second PCIe slot on it. And that is because, for some reason, the thumb screws on the standard mounts at the rear just wouldn't come off and I've tried pliers, had screwdrivers, aggressive force but those top two just wouldn't come off. Now I'll talk in a bit more depth about that in the main video of course because I think it's important but overall the case was really nice to build. The fans seemed quite intimidating with four cables each but it was a daisy chain setup and actually once you work that out and put them all together they come out really nice it also has obviously the highlights of things like the rgb lighting on the front some quite nice aesthetics overall and the result is pretty good obviously there are a number of highlights that you'd get in more expensive well-known cases uh, some nice cable channeling visuals for the psu at the bottom uh, just overall really nice aesthetic it seems like it'll have great airflow as well i've done some benchmarks that i can use in the main video so this is the end result and a couple of samples of that so if you want to see how it came out and a bit more in-depth look at it then please be sure to check out the full unboxing and setup video thanks for watching this behind the scenes hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments if you've got any questions have a great life